All right, and yes, that was a splendid performance by the Nothing Late Band. They've kept us entertained all morning, and we can't wait to get back to them. But you're welcome. This is still TV3 New Day. It's the Christmas Eve edition. And as we're enjoying all these songs, I'm sure that you're planning um, for whichever event you may be attending. Maybe you started attending some of them already. There was Muzama Disco two nights ago. Uh, there have been some number of events. In fact, tonight... It's going to be like a competition. We're not sure where you're going. Are you going for Stone Boys concerts? Are you rather going for Kim Promises, Promised Land? Do you have plans for the Afro Cellas, Afro Nation? I mean, talk about Sarkody and his concert. Is that happening as well? I haven't heard anything well, from no, Sark and his team. Yet, but 25th but, is when he does his events yeah. as well. So which one are you attending? We want to hear from you. And if you're not attending any of them, tell us why. Are you one of those who is also hoping to attend and watch WizKid's live concert? And unfortunately, for some reason, he didn't show up. And will that have an effect on the events that are also coming up? Because I've been monitoring Kim Promise's uh, Twitter handle and also Kill Beat's Twitter handle. And yesterday, it was crazy. Like the comments that were coming in, I'm quite worried, but I still like the spirit of Kim Promise and his team because they're still pushing. They're doing everything they can to let you know that Promise Land is still happening today. Are you going to attend or not? Are you one of those disappointed Whiskey fans who's thinking, hmm, will he show up or not? And for that reason, I may not be attending. I know Stoneboy is also happening. Would you be attending? And to discuss all of this with us, we have quite a number of people. But this morning, we'll start off with Sena Kwashi. He's a digital expert. Good morning. Good morning. Looking nice all white. So are you ready for 1st January already? We are in a celebratory mood. We are. So yes. you have to wear white. Yes, I know. Exactly. But you look nice. Thank you. I hope much. you're well. I am well. Have you attended any concerts this year? Um, I need you to set up a bit if you can. So, yeah. Not... Not on that grand scale, maybe small things happening somewhere at garage, you know, oh. something maybe I'm part of. Uh, Wait, you missed Global Citizen? I missed Global Citizen. How? Why? Which? What? <sighs> what is your excuse? I just was not around. Let's put it oh, that way. Oh, okay. Yes. Then that makes sense. Yes, I would have loved to come, uh, okay. you know, since I was there. Mm. Some of my greatest people were there, but yeah. uh, I just missed it. What kind of reviews did you pick from those who attended the concert? It was great. Everybody yeah. seemed to love it. Um, I think... Most of the things that people usually complain about when it comes to concerts, they were pleasantly surprised mm. that, you know, it didn't happen. And then, of course, some people also understood a bit more about the reason behind the Global Citizen Festival. Uh, they loved the sustainability angle. They loved how the organization went, yeah. how security was. You know, it just came across as well-rounded. Yeah. I think the only key thing that people were concerned about was they thought they had to do a bit more to... Mm get the tickets they yeah. didn't realize that at the end of it the tickets were actually free yeah. you just had to participate with uh, some social actions right so a lot of people were held back mm -hmm. and then at the last day when they realized that okay it's actually free they were not trying to rush to get, to get into it. it but i think all overall it was one of the best shows ever on, on one of the show. best yeah. i think it was the best and i'm not even being biased because i worked on it but i think it was the best like they ticked all the boxes they for did. me they did they did and i was pleasantly surprised but again I also expected it because of the team that worked on it. I wouldn't lie to you. For everyone who worked on Global Citizen from the onset, when they started contacting the act, when they started contacting everybody who was supposed to work on it, you could tell that it was systematic. They had yeah. a plan and they followed through with the plan. So everything was just gradual. They were building up gradually. Yeah. A week to the event, everything was timed. Yeah. So at what point you had to go for rehearsals, you had to be there, you had to do it. Because the next hour, there was someone else also mounting exactly. the stage to rehearse. So I thought that they really did plan it well. And again, I understand why people were um, a bit hesitant about it because they weren't sure mm -hmm. if yeah. they were going to live up to expectations. Exactly, yes. They blew our minds. They did. I won't lie. They did. And everybody who had the chance to attend and for one reason or the other couldn't go, they were kind of like, I wouldn't say hurt, but they, they missed out. And yeah. they knew they missed out on something. So you right? agree you missed out? Oh, I did. I did. I now, watched the videos. Exactly. <laughs> now... After that event, what were people saying about other events to follow? I think generally people were talking about how it, is, it had uh, raised the bar and uh, people were doing a lot of comparison. Like, okay, you know, uh, this is how events are supposed to be done. Um, a lot of the response also was around, okay, it's back to the team behind it. The team had a uh, lot of processes, a lot of structures. And, of course, some people who were key experts also in the space came back to defend themselves, mm -hmm. uh, you know, event organizers that... We also have the same processes. It's just that 
the vendors, the artists do not respect our processes as much as they respect these other people because they felt like it was a, an external party, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it raised the bar. Uh, lots of people started looking forward to who can match up. And that's been what we have all been waiting for. Mm -hmm. What are the big events that usually happen? And then it's, it, you are being compared to a standard that is very high now. Yeah. Everybody's going to look back at, oh, and look at what Global Citizen did. Yeah. And look at what you're doing. Is yeah. that fair? I guess in two ways, it's a bit fair. It's good for the space. It's good for the industry to be held to a higher standard. Mm. But of course, also just looking at the level of um, attention, the level of detail, and the level of structure that a global citizen team would have, considering mm -hmm. that this is not their first on that scale. And considering they're not just maybe doing it in Ghana, they did it also then in the US, and yeah. then also run it up in Ghana. It, you, from that side, you can say it's not fair, mm -hmm. but nobody should expect to be held to lesser standards, you know? That's the thing. Yeah. And, and, and that's why a lot of people were very expectant of Whiskey showing up on the 10th of December, because that was supposed to set the tone mm -hmm. for what to expect this Christmas. I'm sure everybody that was there was like, listen, let me get in the mood, because we weren't really feeling Christmas around that time. Yeah. Things were still very tough economically. Yeah. But people still found money to buy tickets. I was quite surprised. I didn't think they would attend. Yeah. Especially the people who bought all the golden circle yeah. tickets, you know? Yeah. And then he didn't show up. Were you there? I was supposed to be there. Okay. And but you know, um, you're supposed to be everywhere, but you're never there. No, so that <laughs> one, I was on my way. Okay. And, you know, you, I was keeping track of everything that was happening uh, on digital because I was really looking forward to seeing Whiskey. Yeah. So around 11, so it's like, oh, Whiskey is not there yet. Around 12, it's like, Whiskey is not there yet. Mm -hmm. and after 12, Whiskey is not there. I know when I arrive there, I'm most likely going to leave the event close to 3, 5 a.m., and yeah. I just hadn't planned for that. So I decided to just turn around and go back home. So it wasn't because you had heard that he wasn't going to show? No, I just, because I kind of got the sense that he was going to come a bit too late for me. Okay. So when I turned around, mm -hmm. then the news started breaking that, okay, you know, he's actually not going to come. People started leaving the venue. People, but people were really keen to wait for Whiskey. People waited up to 3 a.m. just 5 a.m., actually. Yeah, just to see if Whiskey would show up, right? Um, is this something that I feel like I've missed out on? Not really. Okay. Because he didn't show up at yeah. the end of the day. Nobody yeah. got the experience. Um, do people compare it to Global Citizen? Yes. But also on another level, people have more angst towards the show because they paid for it. Yeah. They paid for an experience and mm -hmm. they feel like they missed out on that experience. Um, is it fair to the organizers? We've had a lot of talk. We've seen a lot of uh, PR happen after... Um, the whole fiasco and people are explaining their position. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess people are still in the, the state of explaining their position. Whiskey has come out. He's promised to find a way to make it up to his fans. Uh, I think Live Hub has also promised a way to make it up to the people who bought tickets. So yeah. I guess it was a bad experience. Hopefully every player has learned from it. And then the next shows, people also look towards that to make sure that they don't make the same mistakes. But that's where the problem is. Exactly. Because now I fear for a lot of these artists mm -hmm and whether they can even fill whatever auditorium that they may be hosting their concert. Because Daniel was supposed to host a concert exactly. in Ghana. Yeah. He canceled, and he said it was because of things that had happened in the country. And of course, we all know that it was being linked to Whiskey's yeah. concert and yeah. the fact that he yeah. did not show. Yeah. Are you worried for these artists and the fact that maybe they just might not be able to make their numbers like they were hoping to? In terms of worried, yes, most likely. I think also people look at it from a sort of historical background. When you look at uh, the Kiss Daniel show, Everything that was being, well, majority of the thing that was being said in my feed, my social feed was around people are not buying the tickets now mm. because Kiss Daniel himself had a history of not showing up to exactly. his own shows, right? And right fresh off the bat of what had happened with Whiskey, people were like, okay, let me just hold on to my money. Yeah. And then the, the, uh, the, the announcement came that the show had been pushed back. People were like, okay, you know, we said it, right? It could have been that it was not related to any yeah. such thing. But, of course, the mental framing has already happened. Mm -hmm. the, there's a spillover from what happened from the Whiskey show. That, how does that, what does that mean for the rest of the artists? I think one of the artists that was supposed to also be on the show with uh, Whiskey, Promise. Yeah. King Promise is doing his own show today, mm -hmm. which would be kind of like a litmus test to really show how he's recovered from the backlash. Has he recovered? That. Have you monitored the comments? Daniel, if you can just go on Twitter, if it's possible, let's take a look at Kim Promise's post and also Kill Beats, because Kill Beats was the one that was really pushing and saying, yeah. for the real fans of Kim Promise, Promise Land is happening. happening. And the comments were not encouraging. Yeah. Honestly, they weren't, because everybody was saying, 
why do I buy a ticket for you not to show? We don't trust that your show will not be there. There were a few people who said, I mean, you guys, let's forgive the guy yeah. and show yeah. up. Yeah. But I, I don't know how they feel about the comments and will that really translate into people showing up or not? Let's see, because at the end of the day, if it's a paid show, of course, people would have to keep their money. Some people take people do not take risk anymore with their yeah. money, especially in the economic situation we are in now. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to hold on to their last peso, right? If it's if there's a chance for people to be able to find some ways to enter it free, it's okay. They it's might still show free. up. Free. It's not possible. He's put out the flyers. <laughs> And, you know, he's charging 500 Ghana I think it's 250 See, for regular, nah, and then 500. 500 for VIP. Yeah. And then they're selling tables. They're starting from 7K. Yeah. So that's not a joke. And when you look at the social sentiment, people are not happy with him, particularly as Green Promise. Also, from back, all the way back from the PR that he put out after the Whiskey show, people felt like this is not something you should say. Right. When you say this is not something you should have said. He mentioned security yeah. uh, con uh, um, uh, issues and yeah. things like that. And he didn't have a right to say that? Is that what people are saying? Yeah, most people felt like, okay, why are you bringing this up after somebody else had put up their statement? So okay. they, there, there was a whole trend. People said he was doing copy and paste. Yeah. Like he just copied the thing, changed it there, his name and, and they, put it in there. They call him Nguadi Paul now. <laughs> I mean, Twitter. You can't yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Is a, Twitter is a crazy place. But it's also a good place to feel the pulse of the people. Mm. So I think you have the, uh, the tweets up now. Okay, we'll see yes. if we can we'll pull see, some of them up, up and, um, we'll the and see what people have to say. Because honestly, I feel like Kill Beats was testing the waters and then Kim Promise came and announced it. Maybe you should go further down um, on his page if you're scrolling mm -hmm. um, to 19 hours ago posts. That's the one that had all the comments, the crazy comments. We'll try and pull it up um, for you to see. But you think that what? We have to wait to see if people will show up? I think we have to wait to see, yes, but we can also, the organizers themselves can also make a sort of a judgment from their side, just looking at social sentiments now, and also look at how many people have actually purchased the tables, the tickets, mm. as at now. But you right? know how can you enter? We're last minute. Yes, that's the thing. So how many people have purchased and what's the uptake? Today's the show. Yeah, the show is it's happening today. today. Yeah. Yes. So normally, that the last day of the show, you'd see an uptake, right? People... Mm -hmm who have just now heard about it or people who have heard about it and they made a plan that they are waiting for their, uh, you know, December salary to drop in, yeah. their bonus to drop in before they buy the tickets and things like that. They probably have gotten it now. So then they are rushing to buy. If they don't see that uptake, that already is defining how the show is going to go in terms of attendance for them. Kim Promise in particular, he's been very vocal about the industry and how it has not necessarily supported him. Yeah. And of course, you play in this circle so you would understand. It looks like he's been very bitter about things. And then this happens. Does this worsen the situation for him? Because already, you know, he feels like he's not getting the ample support that he should get. And now he yeah. didn't show. And people are pissed off about it. I think for Kim Promise, he, 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 he looks at the industry from two sides. He has had the opportunity to also be exposed to the Nigeria side of it. So he looks at how the whole processes and the structures from the yeah. Nigerian view of their... Uh, culture, media, and Good. how they Well, hold on. Let, let's just see some of the messages that were coming through. Um, if you can just zoom in for me. So this was when he posted 19 hours ago, and he said, Love you guys. Tomorrow, I promise land with a family will be amazing. A true five-star experience with big surprises. Let's go. Then he tags uh, Sarkoli is going to be there. Omale is going to be there. Joe Boy, Jackie, One Real Joey B, Joe, uh, uh, Darko Vibes, Camido. And a lot more people are going to be there. So that is the artwork. Um, and actually, this is not the post. I wanted the other one, I think. Oh, oh, this is it. This is it. Okay, let's scroll up. So this is what someone said. Big Joe says, that's a strong lineup. Forget your beer. Tomorrow, Ghanaians will show up in their huge numbers. You know what else has a strong lineup? This. And then they tagged. Um, this is Stone Boys. Is this Stone Boys' own? No, 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 no this, this is somebody, different. Okay, let's scroll up. Selling, selling their let's book. scroll up. So someone says, Chale, Chale, will you even show up? This exactly. is what someone is saying. Then yeah. this one says, it's like Ghanaian music lovers enjoy humiliation. The more you humiliate them, the more they support you. Events organizers, um, event organized by a Ghanaian, and you made you and your Nigerian stars as headline artists, and you betrayed them by not turning up, and you made the organizers lose money, and you're here calling for us. Bill Berman says, you see how live they, you go do interviews, they brag, say, you dear, you know they release supporting ads because you won't feel like everybody, they come sick of you. As a thing, they make bees, dear, you do flyer. Hmm. Sick of safety reasons, I think you won't <laughs> come. That is Payal. Agbe Bismarck says that, hey, make you invite Michael Jackson. 
in goes to head the concert itself. We know go come. And um, man them work hard to put gun on the globe. One mistake where he do, just one no. Now, you know, uh, you, you know, they talk trash for comment session. The funny thing is those ranting have never attended any concerts in Ghana before, but them get mouth. Don Image says, Chris Waddle, no go add money this year. We know they feel safe at your events. Yes. And we all know what's going on with Chris Waddle and the whole R2B's team as well. Kalu says, the same Ghanaian to support your show. What a joke. Mr. Alote, I'm a big fan, but I prefer not to be ghosted. So I'll go to Beam Concert. Huh. Where's Whiskey? That's what AFG Success is asking. MJ Ben says that be wise, so because all these artists will pass through Stone Boys concerts. So why should you miss Beam Concert while the, that one is safer than this promised land? Think about your safety first, so my people. Your family needs you. Then Abigail comes in and says, we don't have security, so me and my buddies will be home. Thanks. Jodel says, you then kill Biggs. Okay, no, I'm not going to read that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry that we even projected that. There's something about Mary says, simple logic. Now know the reason why I can promise an R2B is no go Chris Wado in show. Where them go Jackie in show. Oh, I see, because Wado no get fans, or let's say DB fans, but Jackie does. Okay, well, these are some of the comments. And if you go on um, Kill Beats page as well, it's crazy what they are saying about the concert and whether they are attending or not. Is anyone to be blamed here for what's happening? To say if it's anyone to be blamed, someone is to be blamed. It's, a, it's about who, exactly. It's mm -hmm. about who do we actually blame for this. And when you look at uh, what we just read, a lot of the people are referring back to Promise's own reason for not yeah. making it uh, to the show, right? Around security, security reason. Which, again, brings me back to the topic of where exactly is he doing his show? I think uh, Promise Land happened at La Beach. Yes, let me try and put, yeah. La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Yeah, La Palm Royal Beach yes. Hotel. And I think the BIM concert is happening. I have to check. I haven't yeah. seen that. Because it could also then just be that people are actually genuinely concerned mm. about security at mm. the location. Mm. But at this point, just looking at the backlog of what has happened, it's hard to tell where uh, the sentiments are being shared from. Mm. Whose fault is it? Do we blame the event organizers for not making sure that they've ticked the right boxes yeah. for, uh, should I say, artists not to pull out of the shows at the last yeah. minute? Or should we blame the artists themselves for just also, the, again, pulling out at the last minute? It's really hard to kind of say right now also because we don't have the full information still from everything that's happened mm -hmm. from the whiskey show down to even the kids daniel show everybody just comes to say one or two reasons reasons beyond our control or security yeah. reasons right so you don't really know who to apportion blame to fully in that sense well beam concert is happening at the grand arena at 6 p.m today and in fact stoneboy will be on the show with busy signal busy signal is like his uh major acts on the show as well so it's going to be bingy, yeah. like they would say, and they're coming. And it looks like there's going to be, well, I can't predict, but it looks like a lot of people are tilting more towards Still, Stone Boy, yeah. again, because of what is happening. Let's talk about him and concerts that he's had and how it's been for him. Because yearly, we see a shaman to the world, and then he comes in December and does something for his fans yeah. as well. There's no exception this year. We've seen a shaman to the world already yeah. happen. It was big. Now this is happening as well. It will what be are big. his chances? It will be big? It will be big. I think uh, Stone Boy has a good blend of fans and he has a good blend of the way he positions himself right on mm. social he does he does quite good pr he he's loved both online and offline right so it will translate quite into some good numbers for him uh, regardless of what he's doing mm. uh, even his performance at the fan festival uh, in um, Qatar yeah also you could see how people were reacting so Stoneboy yeah. has been a loved performer true and true and it is expected that that will reflect also in the numbers that attend his show and it's not because of what's happened recently the fact that people are pissed off at one side so they they'd rather all there might be, be a spill-off there might be a spill-off but um, in terms of just looking at the grand nature of how Stoneboy's shows have been over the years, mm. it's, it, if there was no such bad, uh, should I say, taste in the mouth of events goers, it would still be a great show, right? Mm. So people would still find ways and means to make it to Stoneboy's show regardless. Do we have videos of Busy Signal when he landed in Ghana? Stoneboy was at the airport. Uh, Danny, do you have that one? So we can take a look at it. Or maybe even previous concerts that he's hosted, how it went down. Can we at least listen to that? Okay. Is that going to be possible, producer, director? No? 
Anyway, like I mentioned, so Stoneboy is coming here with Busy Signal later today. So expect that um, to go down on the show in a couple of minutes. Are we going to be able to play the videos? Okay, let's carry on then. But, I mean, those are the two concerts that we're expecting today. There's still going to be a number of concerts that will be happening, by the way. Surprising, though, that I haven't heard anything from South Korea's team. I think Rapaholic X, uh, that's what they're calling it, is, yeah. it's happening. It is happening tomorrow. It's happening, no, on the 25th. Or, yeah, it's happening today's sometime. 24th. Oh, today's 24th. Is wow. it not? I'm not in the Christmas mood yet. Oh, today's 23rd. Yeah. Oh, I'm a it's happening ahead. on That's Sunday. That's why I keep saying Christmas Eve. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's okay. So it's Sunday, happening on Sunday. It's happening on Sunday. 24th. Um, there, there has been some good push uh, also from his side and his team's side on social media. Um, he keeps pushing uh, the need for people to cop the tickets early now mm. and not wait to rush, which, uh, of course, everybody's reading into like, okay, you want to already start to see if you're going to have a great number, yeah. which, again, at the end of the day, it's sacred, yeah. I was talking to a friend earlier and... He kept mentioning that he wants to just go to Sarkodie's uh, Rapaholic show. That's where he feels that he has been getting the best energy from Sarkodie. Things have been coming out uh, mm. from him that great. So it's something that, again, he will get good numbers. Uh, yeah. It's it's Sarkodie. I think it's it's one of the, in terms of the artist shows, it's one of the ones that people look forward to a yeah. lot. Yeah, right? so he's likely to come. But there's like Joe Boy it. live in Ghana on there's, that same day as well. Yeah, I think the timelines don't really clash for the two. Mm. If 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 because I think Joe Boy Live is happening at Garage. Yeah. Which of course Garage cannot accommodate as many people. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody would kind of you know that thing where you kind of bar hop. People yeah. will start event hopping if they could or if they can afford it, right? You go from one. But we've always known how rapaholic has been. If you leave, you're losing your seats. Exactly. Because you're not even sure if you get the seats <laughs> when you go in there. It's yeah, always over. Exactly. So I don't know how it's gonna be. But let me also introduce my second guest in the studio, Baba Sadiq Abdullah Abu. He's a media and entertainment entrepreneur. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Bella. It's Merry Christmas in advance. Merry Christmas. How are you? Well, I'm good. How are you too? I'm fine, thank you. Was there yes. a bit of traffic? Yes. Kind of. <laughs> it's fine. But we're discussing events. Are you attending any of the concerts today? <coughs> well, um, not today. Today I'm resting it out. Um, oh. But I attended Black Horse events uh, okay. two days ago. How was that? It was very huge. Very massive. It was? Very massive for an artist that had a major breakthrough this year. Mm -hmm. You know? And, I mean, it was refreshingly different as well. It was outdoor. He had a festival style to it. Okay. And he had a lot of the Gen Zs, you know. I mean, obviously, that that show has set Black Hose, um position as the, as a Gen Zs, the hero of the Gen Zs, essentially. Yeah. Mm. You know, so, but it was positive. It was very good. Did you attend Whiskey in, uh, Live in Ghana as well? Were you there? Yes, I was there. Oh, you were there? Yeah, I was there. And you still went for Black Horse events. Were yeah. you not afraid that for some reason? Because a lot of people are saying that once I've been to a Whiskey concert and he didn't show, the Ghanaian artist didn't show, I don't think I want to go to any concert again, any event at all, because well, I don't want to be disappointed. I, I think it's good for people to point out specifically those that didn't show mm. and not necessarily the Ghanaian artists. A lot of Ghanaian artists did show on the event. Mm. Um, that covers performed at Westgate. Yeah. Um, Jackie was on stage. Jackie was on stage. Yeah. Fia was on stage. Yeah. Well, you know, and so I don't think that the narrative that all Ghanaian artists didn't show would be um, right. Um, uh, but essentially, back home was, down, was on that bill. Yeah, of course. And so, and I had an idea, the level of preparations that was going into the Black Hole event. And so, you know, I was comfortable. And I'm sure a lot of the Gen Z's that turned up were equally comfortable um, and were excited to be there as well. From your point of view, what went, went wrong at the Whiskey Live in Ghana concert? Well, without, I mean, for somebody like me who is also at the event, usually would want to wait for the detailed event report before uh, making pronouncements um, or com com running commentaries on mm. it, essentially. Um, but, I mean, everything, as far as I'm aware, was in place. I mean, mm. the whole idea of the security issue was, was just an afterthought. There was, as far as I knew, because I, I knew some of the guys that worked on the event, okay. um, their security was on point. It was? Their security was on point. I mean, I'm aware of the security guys that worked on it. It was on point. It was solid. Their setup was one of the best we've seen in a long time. You know? Really? Yeah. I mean, but I'm hearing best. from people who attended the concert and were complaining about security. Well, maybe. I'm sure that there was, they probably had some miscommunication issues regarding where they wanted to be at. But in terms of feeling secured mm. or essentially, I mean, ensuring that the security of patrons was anything to go by, I think it was one of the best, as, um, you know. But as it, as it were, with every event, um, beyond and outside of the event itself, I mean, just sometimes you would have some a few incidences happening. But as far as I was aware, um, the security was point. good. Production was good? Production also was good in terms of the level of preparations that went into it. 
Um, what but, you're saying then rubbishes Wizkid's statement that was put out because he course, complained about production and said there were security uh, challenges as well, which is why he didn't show. The Wizkid, the, the Wizkid statement was an afterthought. Quite clearly, it was an afterthought. He was just trying How to. So? It was he was just trying to insulate. It was just. A, it was not actually PR. PR doesn't thrive on on lies. And, yeah. and you're saying and, that and, was a lie. That statement. It obviously, was a lie. You were saying obviously. Obviously, you, obviously. you probably know something. I, I, of course, like I said, because I knew the level of uh, preparations that went into it, quite clearly the only plausible reason that could have been adduced was the fact that, I mean, he probably didn't have the numbers that he probably would have thought, you know, but the number was decent. I don't think it was less than, what we saw was less than 10,000. Huh? Yeah. I th but because also because of the setup. When you look at the setup, usually the stadium events, you do it behind the goalpost. Yeah. So when it's behind the goalpost, it's good to really put everybody together, mm -hmm. You know, and have everybody face that particular um, what's it called? That particular stand. Is it also stand? Yeah. yeah. You know, so usually you would have that. Okay. But in this particular instance, they set the stage in the middle. The stadium itself is what capacity 44, 45,000. Yeah. You know, and so obviously when you set it up like that, and you have people spread over, easily when you have 10,000 people, you will look like you don't have the numbers. Exactly. There, you know, so that was, but that was a decent crowd. That was a decent crowd. I mean, of course, not anything like the big eruption concept. Of course. But then again, it was a very decent crowd. The setup was, the setup, I mean, in short, I don't know what plan they had, but I mean, the setup sort of spread the audience. Because but if you look at the audience, it was a very decent audience and he could have performed to them. I think, I think Whiskey's team didn't want to perform because they didn't want the narrative or the numbers because they were probably in other markets, they had filled this 45,000, 40,000, yeah. and you know. And so the whole conversation about the security and all of those was clearly an afterthought and a way to insulate himself okay. when the pressure from the uh, um, ticket holders became... Well, um, I guess you, we can tell from the visuals that, yes, it was filled to an extent, but then there's that side of the stadium as well exactly. that was empty. So that's why I said to you that when you look at the setup, because yeah. I was there, I saw the setup. In the way the setup was done, the stage was put in the middle. And so when you consider all these guys that were there and some of the guys who were on the VIP mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. and milling over all of the place, this number won't be anything less than 10,000. Yeah. Wow. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be anything less than 10,000. It was a heavy crowd, but again, setup and um, site management is everything. I'm sure they had, they, had, um, um, they had projected that they're probably going to have that. For, look at the numbers mm -hmm. that was there. Mm -hmm. All these mm -hmm. numbers. This is crazy. This is not... In the last few times we've had We've had performances there. All these numbers won't fill the backstage, the yeah. behind the goalposts yeah, that we've been doing. Mm. It won't. The setup was good. Take a look at the technical setup. This is the same Afro-Nation stage, the same stage that was used for Global oh, Citizen. Oh, okay. Same stage. You know, so, and I mean, I, and I know some of the guys that worked on security, the best. I know some of the guys that did the technical production. Rudy was involved in this. This yeah, couldn't have done it, because cool. this couldn't have been anything less. <laughs> you know, but again, the thing about talent, um, business people, conversation mm. is that just sometimes when it comes to fanatics or fans, you don't win. You can't win the conversation. Yeah. And so the talents always know when to just throw Something the business people under the bus, mm. which kind of is dangerous because in markets such as this, where uh, the investment in the business or the commerce of it is lacking, <clears throat> I thought talent every time that it's always dangerous to just be um, selfish and think of yourself alone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we need to discuss the commerce and the business of showbiz as much as we need to discuss the arts, yeah. aka the talent, yeah. or enabling the talent. It's very important. Yeah. But if every time we're having conversations around talent disregarding investment that goes into shows, talent disregarding the, the effort that goes into putting some of these things together mm. and only thinking of themselves, it denies the space of that much needed investment and eventually everybody suffers. You know, hmm. which 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 shouldn't be the best, but quite clearly this this was this was a very good show. Good. Yeah. If he had showed up, it would have been a nice and on the cake. Yeah. Think, well, George Britton has also joined us. He's a talent manager, um, and also a pundit. It's been a while I saw him. Charlie, what's up? I'm good, really. You're yeah, I've dug me, but it's fine. We'll have that conversation later. All right. But but Sadiq just brought something <laughs> up about talent and how they need to manage some of these events. Mm -hmm. That is where talent management comes in because yeah. you are the ones who oversee everything that happens with your talent. From being booked for events, negotiations, making sure they appear, making sure that whatever they ask for as well is given them. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this case, would you blame the talent managers of Whiskey and every other artist that didn't show at the event? 
Because they are also blaming the organizers. The organizers have come out to say that we did everything that we had to do to make sure Wizkid would be comfortable and would be there. Yeah. He still didn't show. He says, you guys, and I'm not saying <laughs> you, <laughs> but these people sure. didn't organize the event well. Their production was poor. Their security was even poorer. Well, I think even before the, you know, the event itself kicked off, uh, of course, Wizkid and his team will send uh, a rider. Mm. Which the event organizers, you know, lived to that expectation. Like Sadiq said, it was just pure, purely the fact that the fans didn't turn up. That was like he didn't turn up because, I mean, you know, we, we travel around, uh, you know, go for events, and there are places that when you go and you see the crowd, you know, as a manager, uh, let me put that to aside. As a manager, you feel a bit disappointed when you don't get the numbers that you expect. Mm. And looking at where Whiskey is coming from, you know, he's been able to fill Ocho Arena three times, 20,000, three times. Mm -hmm. You know, he's filled Madison Square and all these places. So, you know, he was expecting to fill a cross sports stadium, you know, but I think uh, both parties somehow made a lot, some small, small mistakes. What uh, are those mistakes? I think with regards to ticket sales, I think uh, the, 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 the sales, the, the, the price was a bit on the high. Mm. You know, because looking at the stadium, we all have a certain perception about stadium. Um, for us to, you know, have a very fill, uh, packed stadium, we need to look at the ticketing. I mean, <laughs> some of the ticket sales, some of the ticket prices was, you know, to me was a bit outrageous. But hey, this is whiskey. This is stadium, I H think. How much was he charging when he was filling O2? I mean, it probably was high as well. Well, but you see, yeah. this is London. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you get me? The markets are different? Yeah, they are different, you know. Okay. I mean, if, listen, I mean, if you, the upper terrace, let's say, you know, they were going for 50 cities or probably mm -hmm. 20 cities, I'm sure that place would have been filled. But that's risky. Why would he charge 50 cities? No, but you see, then you look at the numbers. Now, he didn't charge that amount, but this happened. You get me? If you had charged 20, 50, or even 100 at the upper terrace, you probably would have been able to fill that. But I mean, back to the question. I mean, as an artist manager, I would love my artist to perform on stages like this. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, he's, he's meant, aside the streaming, aside the endorsement deals, and, you know, uh, publishing this and all that. These are things that, you know, get you the opportunity to reach out to the fans. And of course, reach out to the new people who, you know, are going to stream your music or be mm -hmm. new fans. So if you don't turn up, uh, it's a huge dis disappointment. I know very much that there are people in this camp who will be disappointed for him not turning up. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe he might be a bit superior than uh, some people in there. So you can say, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. But in some instances, you know, he should have been pushed to come and perform. Even but, if he insists that he's not sure. Yeah, that's, that's a problem here. I mean, for where Whiskey sits, uh, it's quite it's a big deal. Exactly. And then again, he is also concerned about the kind of brand that he has. Uh, people are going to snap. People are going to take photos, videos, and, to, and behind him, mm -hmm. they are going to see a lot of empty seats, yeah. Yeah. and probably will have a dent on his brand because he's he's used to filling auditoriums. So he thought, no. This wouldn't be ideal. Especially at a time when it had been announced that David was also going to perform in Qatar. So I'm sure they were looking at all that and thinking, my closest <laughs> contender is going to Qatar to go and perform to the, the whole world. The whole world, I know. And then there's going to be videos of me uh, with the, empty the, seats the in Ghana. If the organizers indeed did promise a 45,000 or 44,000 fill to capacity student to whiskey, they would, would have been an ambitious thing to pull out. Did they promise? That's the thing. But I'm not sure they will. I'm, at any other price. I'm not sure they will promise at that. At any other price, I'm not sure. filling the stadium within an, around this time would have been an, an ambitious thing. Look, it's 44,000 and overkill. It, it no, but it, no, but what, what, we're not looking at this. This is more than 44,000 because the 44,000 is just, 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 just exactly. yeah. But in this case, they came onto the field. The field. Yeah. And the field, the field alone can so. take even 40,000. No, but this is half of the field. Yeah, so we should say... But it's actually in the middle of this. Uh, the, the, yeah. The, it can, it can so, take so like... Audience, it can I take mean, like 20,000. <laughs> you should know because... On the ground, it can take like 20,000. It can take. Yeah. It, it can take. It can, actually. It can. And it's the spread of it. Look, I mean, from the more reason I say it would have been ambitious is that anybody that has been actively involved in events, in event investments, live entertainment investment, I've always made the point that from January to November, we've already, we've already been experiencing low ticket sales to social economic factors. Mm -hmm. Most of us were waiting out to see how December was going to play out, mm -hmm. to see, okay, well, due to the diasporans coming into Ghana, often there's a, there's a, there's a hike. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. they, you see some bit of, because they come in with cash. Mm -hmm. And so when you have them also, taking part in some of these events and paying, you know, you would probably experience some um, huge numbers. Mm. And of course, anybody that's also been a keen watcher of December will tell you that the first two weeks, often when you don't have the diasporas, it's always risky mm. to put together some of these things. You see a jump from about 
the dash fans start coming in from about 15th. Yeah. You know, that's when they start to come in. And so 15th, there about, even sometimes, also <clears throat> often risky when you put together like a major live experience from about 15th, 16th, 17th. Often it takes over, it takes off very well from 21st or 20th. Yeah. From 21st, 20th, that last 10 that's days, when. that's when you have a lot of the dash fans in town. Okay. And then you can have them because locally, in the last, actually over the last two years, we've been experiencing decline Declining in ticket sales. Is it? Particularly What's the January, reason? particularly socioeconomic factors, mm. particularly in January to um, November. And it's actually even become more riskier to put together live experience, also because, you know, previously, the way the model of the market was, was that um, you had sponsorship showing mm -hmm. up whatever initial investment you put into, the, into it. The sponsorship market has crashed. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost non-existent now. Again, also due to socioeconomic factors. Because when the economy bites hard, one of the easiest places where that's affected is marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, your BTL, the sponsorship market, sits. And so when that is also heavily impacted, there won't be the much needed investment of funds even break even. Yeah. to be yeah. able to put into some of these yeah. events. And so now event pro uh, producers or promoters would have to dig deep, find that yeah. bigger investment to be able to create it. Again, there's another risk where people do not have a lot of money in the pocket, obviously you would have them spending, um, um, you would have a few of them mm -hmm. actually income. spending. Yeah. And I see people say, oh, but we see them in the nightclubs. Look, the nightclub numbers are very yeah. small. Yeah. And there's a new phenomenon that has come. Which the is? new nightclubs do not charge gate fees, unlike yeah. before. You know, previously when we're going to Twist and Co, you'd have to have pay to your pay 50 CDs. Oh, now they don't pay? They don't. Oh. They don't. Oh. You go in and I didn't buy know that. The, they bank in their profit and revenues on the drinks. Yeah. Yeah. They don't charge the guys anymore because Boogie I know usually they allow the girls in for just, free. Just show up well dressed, like, yeah. nicely, book your table, come in, buy your drinks and go. Yeah. That's where they are banking it. So they are all adapting to the new changes that's happening. Oh. So there's a whole lot of shifts and there's a whole lot of things happening in the space business wise. But again, like I said, a lot more people in the industry will not see because Almost always when we've had conversations about industry, we don't it's about enabling arts. the arts, exactly. not the business aspect not the of it. Business, yes. And so it, it prevents industry and society and everybody appreciating the level of investment that people are there. It's almost actually become an extreme sport to invest in live experience, uh, experiences yeah. in town now. And the model has got to change one way or the other. Yeah. It's your show, but I have a question for Baba. Okay. <laughs> for the land. Yeah. Mm. So I like the explanation you've just given. Mm. Relate that back to, I think I uh, saw the news a couple of days or weeks ago, yeah. to Waterland 2022 being mm -hmm. cancelled. Because mm -hmm. that's something I was looking yeah. forward to. Well, I mean, we had to cancel it because, I mean, one aspect of the stakeholders wasn't really coming through in the ways that we expected. Mm. And by the time they, they, they started to become responsive, it was late. Lost it was late, oh. really, because if you look at how we go into Waterland, we go in deep. It's a forest reserve. It's a reserve, mm -hmm. first and foremost. And it's an aspect of the reserve where we could organize some of these live experiences. It takes time. We need to take electricity in there. You're pouring, you're taking electricity that's pouring almost like an entire village. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so you need to prepare the grounds. You need to do a whole lot of things. You need at least two months access to the grounds. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, so where where you are the res the responsiveness of from one stakeholder is becoming late. I, I mean, I took a decision against some of the some of the team members who say, look, you know, we need to cancel it. Mm -hmm. we, we can't yeah. drop the ball because Waterland is like, Up when you there, look at yeah. the most of the things, if you look at our documentary videos, you see the level of the level of preparations that goes into it. Yeah. I mean, we've got a health team alone that's about 50. Mm -hmm. Health team, I mean, we've got about three doctors on site. Wow. We've got a number of uh, nurses and health assistants on there. We've got a technical team that will put together all the massive stage. There's an accommodation village that takes in almost about 4,000 people, mm. you know. And so there's a whole lot that goes into it. It's not just the event. It's the whole process yes. leading okay. up to it. Okay. And so once, they couldn't, once we couldn't have one that of the runway to make yeah. that. Yes, to, to be able to come through, I just took the decision to say, you know what, I mean, let's call it off because, again, Waterland has evolved from just being an entertainment festival. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a clean climate, uh, future-focused event. Okay. And so there are a lot of international things that you need to take. And once you're having all these international organizations that are in, in, involved in climate change who are interested in Waterland, you need to ensure that to ensure. It's, it's, it's organized as a festival yeah. in the ways that it ought to. So we just okay. took a decision to, you know, to risk it a little till we're able to resolve some of the issues, um, issues that are, I mean, um, delayed setup 
Okay. So we can also so that's come back why. in the next day. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Kim Promise now. I had asked uh, that earlier, what, Senna actually earlier, what he made of the responses that Kim <laughs> Promise was getting under his post. Beats. I'm sure you've also monitored those yeah, comments yeah, as yeah. well, so, especially so, so. on the back of him also not showing up <laughs> at the Whiskey in Ghana um, concert. What are your thoughts, George? <laughs> well, I said, you know, some of these uh, comments. Anyway, but I saw, I saw uh, Killer's uh, reply to one tweet yesterday, yeah. which he said, even there are three people who come to perform. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you had a backlash because people said, we had more than three people at the stadium, so why did you turn up? Is it because this is yours, so mm. you're giving every reason to be there? Mm. I think, like Baba said earlier, uh, the talent needs to also give back to the people, you know? Uh, I can tell that somebody actually went to the stadium because of Kim Promise, of course. you know? And he didn't turn up, and it, it's not a good sign. Uh, clearly, people these days don't just take, the fact that you're an artist, they wouldn't just worship you, they'll come at you, can't get to your social media. So, the fact that yesterday they were going back and forth, you know, Killer, <laughs> I mean, for the first time I saw Killer ranting. Uh, I think most of Surprisingly, it. Surprisingly, eh? Yeah, most of it was on, uh, <laughs> on, on, on <laughs> Snapchat. Mm -hmm. It was getting uh, to them. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was getting to them. Yeah. Because, you know, we're watching the, to the place where the fanatics don't think you as an artist need to take them for a ride. Yeah. Yes, they, they stream your music, they support you all year round, and for you to show up, and for you to come and entertain them and it becomes a problem, they, you know, we don't even need you. Mm. you know, because yesterday I read quite some tweet which was a bit unfortunate to, you know, came from us. And if, if you're a sponsor, you'd be sitting back looking at oh, people's this, reaction yeah. to, mm -hmm. you know, the concert, and which I think wasn't the best. So clearly. Can you blame the people who were commenting? No, no, I mean, listen, uh, honestly, I thought whiskey. Uh, Kim Promise shouldn't have, you know, even written any mm -hmm. apology, any letter after mm -hmm. the whiskey show, because he wasn't at the center of discussion. Mm -hmm. It was a whiskey that let it slide. So he yeah. didn't support your own. You know, yeah. <laughs> yes, let it slide and be, but he made <coughs> himself the center after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. after yeah, that I, post. I think yeah. the post, it, 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 to me, it was very unnecessary. Yeah, and that is what people are, you know, driving at. Uh, I don't know if you if you can promise, if you are looking to bank on on losing a certain following or gaining. A bigger one, true whiskey. What would you do? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I, promise, I, I would have. That's what he promised did anyway. No, I would have. <coughs> I would have kept quiet, but because listen, this is your home. You know, already the conversations about whiskey not turning up, and mm -hmm. people are very, people are very, very angry, mm -hmm. because the amount of money that people that's paid bad. to see mm -hmm. him. And the in fact a, in that a tough year such as this, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, like the yeah, and the fact that you have to stay, yeah, most people stay there till about four a.m. Four, five, three, yeah. you know, <coughs> and you left without, you know. So I, you know, I think there was a guy to three interview. He was in a party mood, mm. <laughs> you know. He mm. wanted to dance throughout, and he only danced for the amount he paid. Mm -hmm. So people were really, really angry, and I wasn't expecting which uh, came to you know come and give us another promise. Well, his concert is coming up. Uh, Tonight. Yeah, that's a very nice one. Keen to come and give us another. Yeah, another exactly. <laughs> but you know, his concert is coming out tonight. Uh, yeah, so I think they really went hard since yesterday. I've been saying, you know, they post all over the place. Uh, yeah, of course, we all supported it. You mm. know? Whatever happens is, is in Ghana, it's for Ghanaians, and we will, we will push. But tomorrow, they shouldn't take anyone for granted. You know, they should, if you're built for an event, try as much as you can to, you know, show up and entertain the people. Listen, these are times that these guys want to have a feel of you. Yeah. How many more are they? You understand? So mm -hmm. when I get to party with you, it probably will take a, a way. Should they have held on I've, to this concert? I have a popular opinion on this okay, one. Right? Okay, tell um, us. And again, um, of course, I mean, the, the tweet <coughs> from Kilbit is unfortunate. Mm. Um, <coughs> Kilbit needs to be very careful the things that he mm. does to the brand Kim Promise. I mean, Kim Promise. Yeah. Kim Promise is very promising. Mm. And Kim <laughs> Promise is mm. really. Pun intended. Kim mm. Promise is one of the most talented talent like he's one of the like yeah. talents he's top talents yeah. that's up there like easily one of the guys that could place us on the map mm -hmm. yeah yeah kim promises difficulty and limitation has always been his team mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i saw a lot of two that are saying oh sadiq is vindicated from the comments that he made years ago and everything mm -hmm. look we just sometimes don't say anything for for anything's sake i saw it we experienced it by the time a lot of us have been speaking about his team members and how they go about, how they go about some of the other things, mm -hmm. we've been seeing it and know it. Yeah. They would, they would mess the young guys up. The guy is onto something. Promise has got it. I've always made the point. One of the most talented talents who should be working like this year. Mm -hmm. If you see that some of the songs can promise are dropped. Yeah. 
Top There's one. none other. Mm -hmm. I, I keep saying it like I see it like I've listened to songs, listened to Kim Promises songs. Killer. This is the guy. And when you go into the diaspora, particularly in Europe, and you see the amount of following he has, yeah. you know that easily, easily, yeah. one of the guys that really places there and actually gain it is Water. But I said to the team that a lot of things have changed. Years ago, when you needed the global attention, you needed to be vested globally. In globally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now more than ever, particularly yeah. when the diaspora audience are looking home and consuming home, yeah. you need to cement the base. Mm -hmm. Don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. However, the other unpopular opinion is that that stunt pulled by Kilbit may be what will draw, will draw in the audience. They're getting the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how they say there's mm -hmm. nothing like bad publicity mm -hmm. in entertainment. Mm -hmm. if, however unfortunate it is, it's getting conversations from yesterday to evening, mm -hmm. from at the time when he tweeted. Mm -hmm. The it's conversation crazy. was about King Promise. It's positive. It's a good one. Again, today, we're all talking about King Promise. There will be a number of people that would want to go to King Promise's event because of the tweet from Kilbit. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's in, in publicity stance, is a master stroke. However, it's short term. Yeah. yeah. When you're exactly. pulling all these stunts, you should be mindful of the future. You can pull in the stunt, you get in the numbers. Look, there are a number of people that will go to. The tweet will not prevent people from going to King Promises. But there's so, been constantly really, too. Well, I'm really expecting that both of them will be filled up. Okay. But guess what? We realize that while it's been concert has taken it more conservative. Mm -hmm. And Kim Promise and Kilbit have gone for the stance. We're all having the conversation around it. Yeah. You know, when yeah, we yeah. should also be having a conversation it's around it. Yeah. So from a stance perspective, it's a master streak. It happens, but it's also short term. Yeah. The long term impact of it should be should be seen. There's no proper, proper head-on person in Promises team. He I mean, it's just beyond, beyond I mean <laughs> killer, killer, killer is a super creative. Yeah. Killbeat is super creative when he touches your music and everything. Maybe in recent times it's lost touch, but most importantly, he should get off anything management from Kim Promise. He shouldn't get involved in any of the public stuff. But Kim Promise, Promise does have that, a manager. That does most of the work. It's a management team is involved. Of course. One way or the other. Mm. And he's, he's the bigger guy in Kim Promise's team. Yeah. He's the guy that calls the shot. And once he hasn't got his head properly screwed on, mm. He would, he would mess up a number of things with the guy. But there's some the good thing is, about the guy, the guy is, also being linked to Whiskey because Whiskey also has his team and yeah. it looks as if some way, somehow, because Kim Promise is linked to them, they might be helping him as well. So that's you what I'm saying, that so? Kim Promise has got a lot of people that are currently obviously helping him and a lot of people that are willing to do the extra amount for Kim Promise. And like I said, one of the talents, proud to Blacko showing up. Mm. Proud to almost all of us availing whatever access, network, anything to ensuring that Blacko gets there. One of the few ones that everybody, all of promise. us, were looking to yeah. put into was Promise. Promise, promise yeah. Kiri Kwame Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so th they were there. And then obviously, a number of the things that Kilbit will do make a lot of things people listen to. So if you realize, I keep saying to a lot of people, take a look at the industry people back in Blacko. Mm. Take a look at the industry people back in Camilo. Yeah. We're going so hard mm -hmm. for nothing only because. You've got to prove the point that look. Once we can have that align, uh, uh, alignment, you once can we can have that. respect for each other, yeah. once we can respect each other's value in the chain, everybody will go for each other, and we can create it. And yeah. you needed to show it that look. This is an example of some of the things we both can do together. But it starts from obviously everybody respecting and understanding some of these things. Yeah. It's a master stroke here from a stunt wise. The long term effect of it is negative mm. on the brand, and. A talented talent as promised with the number of things that he's doing doesn't need this. All year round, when we should have been having conversations, and that's some of the things that yeah. pulls him back. Mm. When we should have been having conversations about how brilliant his album or mm -hmm. his uh, releases mm -hmm. were and everything. We're having oh, conversations about, about the controversy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only one person has been able to turn around controversies in a positive line. That's Shatawali. Yeah. If you are not him, you've got to <laughs> yeah, be very careful exactly. the long-term effect of some of these things. Okay. Yeah. You know, and so, but I'm really expectant. I think that the point has been made strongly to him. Ghanaians need to show up for both Stoneboy and Kim Promise. I think that we've sent the message strongly enough to him. Okay. Send him another message of love. Mm. Go there in the numbers, show up, show him the love. Um, let him give you a very good performance to assuage whatever pain mm -hmm. that's in your heart. Mm -hmm. At least go there, spend some money on him. Give the Ghanaian artist <laughs> some money for this December. Please forgive them, but make sure that you know, you know they are good. But Promise, like I said, a number of things needs to change, and I know he knows. He knows he that needs to change his a team. number of things in the management team has got to change. He doesn't have a problem with the Sonics. He doesn't have a problem with his creative output. He doesn't have a problem with a lot of things. A lot of the things that he has a problem with is a thinking and approach by some of the management team members. Senna, you agree? Yeah.
Well, I do agree, but I wanted to ask, uh, could you also just look in at the point of Killer himself and Killer's background, right? There's, a, there's an almost cult following of Killer in the whole R2B stage. It's, it's, it seems almost that they are expecting that that would kind of translate into that cult following for King Promise, mm. which is not what's working for him because King Promise is really not at that point where there are people who are kind of like how you have the Davido cult followers yeah. and then the Whiskey cult yeah. followers. I, I it's not at that point King yet. Promise has got that. He has He's a got, cult? Yo. I don't see them. King Promise, the, okay, so the King Promise cult following is not, it's not in your face and loud. They're more conservative. They're mostly, mm. they're mostly based in the diaspora, particularly you. Ah, okay. okay. Particular, you should have seen Kim Promises' tall, 10, yeah. 10 city tour mm. when he went across Europe. He's got that. It needs to be cemented and it needs to be amplified in the ways that amplified, you should see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Locally also. If we're right. seeing that on Black Hole, we should tell you that there was a certain active, massive involvement. Mm. Look, I know a lot of people that have folded their arms and looking at the cause of some yeah. of these things. When, mm. they should, when they should have been all hands on deck. If you see Camilo, Mm -hmm. And what he did this year. Kim Promise yeah. was on Camilo's song. He had releases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask George. George is here. No, no, no. He's it was, always on my WhatsApp. It was almost, and we don't talk about these things. Yeah. We don't have a conversation yeah. about mm -hmm. this. It's rare that some, you have an occasion such as this where we talk about it again because a lot of people do not get it. Yeah. And so when you say it and you give them an idea of some of the things that happens in the background, they come in for the politics. Look, music at a certain level is politics. Yeah. yeah. Just two days ago, I was just telling them. I, I wanted to hold on just a bit. We have Kim Promise on the line, actually. We've been able to raise him. Kim Promise, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. I'm fine. Merry how Christmas to you in advance. Everything okay? Many happy returns. Many happy returns. Your concert is happening tonight. How are you feeling about it? Excited. You know, I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. Since so the year began, we had a very good one. You know, I got my second album. Yeah. I got my world tour. And it's only right to end it back home. Mm. I with gas for tonight. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, are you a bit nervous about the number of people showing up? Of course, you, you get where this is coming from. On the back of what had happened about two weeks ago at the Whiskey Live in Ghana concert, you not showing up, eventually releasing um, you know, a statement, sharing your concerns about why you didn't show up. But yesterday, I saw you post online. I saw Kill Beats post online. The comments were mixed. There were some who said they'll be there, they love you, of course. But then there were others who said, if you didn't show up at the other concert, I'm not sure I should support you this time around when it's your concert. How do you feel about these comments coming through? I mean, at the end of the day, um, I, I believe what happened has happened, and I've, I've apologized, which I still continue, will continue to apologize, mm. because um, that's not how I meant for it to happen. Um, I'm looking forward to putting on an amazing show for everybody tonight. Mm. So, you know, hopefully we have a night to remember for all the right reasons because <laughs> what we have packed is, is amazing. Like, it's, it's, it's going to be a memorable night, trust me. So, you, okay. You trust that your fans, fans have accepted the apology? Know, yeah, no, I mean, really and truly from the bottom of my heart, you know, when I say I, I apologize for happening, I'm sorry that I turned on that way because mm. I never in any way intended it for, for it to go that way. Which is why today's show is, is, is extra special than anything we've ever done. Do you know mm. what I mean? So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I urge everybody to come out in their numbers because we're going to have the time of our lives tonight. Mm. There are concerns that you may have sabotaged the investors for the Whiskey concert so they can... Come again? There are concerns about you allegedly sabotaging the Whiskey concert, uh, the, the investors for Whiskey's concert, for your concert. Is uh, that never, in any never, way never, true? Never, never, never. That's, that's never true. Have you heard those that's concerns or allegations being made against you? I'm just hearing it now, but it's never true. I'm in, I'm in constant communication with them. With okay. A, with a team. That's it, that. Yeah, yeah. So there was no true. backdoor connecting with the investors to bring them on your events, rather? Nothing of that sort? Um, we've had conversations on other things, so... Um, that, 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 that's, that's that, but you know, mm. at the end of the day, right now, the main focus is my concert tonight. There was never, ever any thought of sabotaging anything at all. I, I'm, I'm not that type of person. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, yeah. you talk about having some big surprises tonight. Do you want to let yeah. the cat out of the bag? At least one or two of those surprises that we should expect. Is Whiskey going to show up? The surprises, I think I'll leave the surprises. But is I've Whiskey showing up tonight? I've announced the lineup, which includes O'Malley, okay. uh, Joe Boy, um, Chaka Dier, mm. uh, 
Taku Vibes, Kamido, Jackie, mm. and this is a very, you know, mm. lovely name that I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to share the stage with. So, um, yeah, anybody who loves, you know, great music and, you know, amazing vibes, she mm. pull up tonight because it's going to be one for the books. Okay. I don't know if you've heard this before. This may be a little off the work you're doing tonight, but we'll talk about it anyway. Sadiq Abdullah is here. And, I mean, of course, asking everybody to be there at your concert. But he says that there's a little problem that he needs you to fix. It is your management team. And he thinks that it's time for you to get an entirely different management team to handle your craft because you're one of the best in Ghana. Unfortunately, that is not translating into the brand that a lot of people expect you to have. Do you agree with that? Have you also sensed that maybe it's time for you to get a new management team altogether to take you to the next level? Um, from when I started my career, I've, I've stuck with the same team, and by the grace of God, I think these same people who have, you know, through the grace of God, propelled me this far. Um, there are some people I don't want to know more, obviously, like along the journey that even people might not know, you know, mm. um, which which is fine by me. Because I actually have nothing to do with them anymore. The most, the, the only active persons on the team that I started with right now are QB mm. and Pops. Okay. Those was two. Uh, the rest I entirely knew that people don't know about. But hey, we learn from our mistakes. We yeah. pray to God and we keep moving. Do you know what I mean? So Should... as we keep adding to the team and you know some of these, it's all for improvement. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, man. I, 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 I love I love the team I have. I'm super proud of them and what we've been able to achieve. Definitely. And, you know, we're still working on even improving and adding people that are going to you know, propel the, the, the brand to the highest level that we seek to achieve. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us this morning, Kim Promise. And all the best tonight. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting show. Yeah? Thank you so we much. We will be there in our numbers. That. Pardon? Come again? We will be there in our numbers to support. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, look, All right. I'll, All look, right. I'll look forward to seeing you. Definitely. And invite Sadiq too from me. Tell Sadiq I'm invited. Oh, Sadiq is here. He can hear you. You are invited. Yeah. Officially. Of course. Sadiq. Of course. And George and, and Senna as well. Thank you so much, King. So you've heard uh, what he says much. about his management team and the fact that, well, most of them have fallen off. It's just a couple of them that he's still working with and he's hoping yeah. to add on to the team. Hey, I think with me, that's, a, that's uh, an approach. Uh, mm. I've, seen, I've seen new people in his team. I uh, wish... Uh, some are, you know, friends of ours. Uh, mm. I was with him in Europe, and I saw different people around. I mean, of course, Quabs was there. Uh, Killer once in a while pulls up. But the other guys that, uh, you know, around him, mainly based in the Europe. That's mm. how come he's doing so well in Europe. I see. Yeah, so okay. I think, uh, they, I mean, they just have to equally apply the same, you know, energy here in Ghana yeah, so that, yeah. you know, he keeps up flow. Like, like um, Sadiq said, Killer is super talented. His music, you mm -hmm. understand. So, mm -hmm. uh, we need these guys to, you know, help sell the Ghana, not just Ghana music, but Ghana as a country to the world. And he's been doing it. Like, this year, he started the world. Uh, amazing numbers at all the concerts that he had. Mm. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, these young talents are putting Ghana on the map. So, therefore, we need to also do everything in our power to, you know, help them get there. Tonight, we're going to Promise Land. <laughs> You're going to Promise Land? Yeah, we're going to Are you passing through Beam as well? Yeah, I'll be everywhere. Because Busy Signal is in Ghana. Charlie, I, I love that guy so much. Yeah, I mean, you can't yeah. afford to also miss that as well. So yeah. I'm sure that people will be divided as to where I to I mean, fortunately for us, Accra is just like, you know, the uh, Qatar. We can watch two, yeah, three, can two, watch. three games. I know, right? <laughs> At the same time. It's not like Lagos and Abuja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, exactly. I mean, it's just about 15 minutes. It's going to be easy to move up so and down. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be I mean, obviously, and there are also differences. One, it's mainly yeah. indoor. One, it has a more festival style, exactly. which is more outdoor. And so... And I think that we need to show up um, very well for the both, both, both yeah. artists mm -hmm. and ensure that they're able to, you know, uh, make it, I mean, as much as possible. It's, it's good to be able to um, um, show up and show them love, regardless mm. of whatever issues that we may have had, yeah. you know. It's important for the culture. Yeah, definitely. George, where is Camido performing this Christmas? I mean, I'm sure he's booked for a number of events. Yeah, quite a number of Tonight at the uh, Promises Place. Uh, okay. Promised Land, sorry. A mm. uh, few... Uh, Corporate events, a few okay. parties, uh, of course, Afro Nation. We we're meant to perform at Waterland, but uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that hey, they have I mean, any Nigerian know. performances as well, because we know that. Uh, no, no, no. I think we, we've, we've, got, we've, got, we've got some few ones in Kampala. Uh, you know, for the past three weeks, it's been Zimbabwe, Sierra okay. Leone, uh, Kenya, and all these okay. places. So uh, we'll end the year in Kampala. You're working. We You're are. working really hard. <laughs> I, I'm actually very excited about Kamido and 
what he's been able to do with his awesome. brand as well. This, this, is, this has been a very it's a, good it's a great talent. It has. Um, it has. You know, I think he, he was, mm -hmm. it was just, it was just a, a waiting bump to explode. So, yeah. you know. And Blacko as well. I, I, I don't know if he's being managed partly by Sadiq. I'm not sure what is going on, but I know you're part of his team. Right? I'm his big brother. <laughs> <laughs> when they don't want to let things out. Please. But anyway, okay, big brother, we hear whatever you say. But that's done and dusted. Tonight again, we have um, Stone Boy, and he's joining us on the show today with Busy Signal to tell us more about the Beam concert. And so look forward to that. And then on the 25th, there's Rapaholic, there's Joe Boy live in Ghana. 28th, we have Afrochella, Detty Raver, Kwaba UK, All Black, Afrochella After Party. Afrochella again on 29th with Afro Nation. Then there's Michael Blankson and Friends on 30th with Afro Nation 30th. First January is Aquaba UK All White. And then Black Star Line Festival. Um, that's on the 6th of January. And so it's crazy, honestly. There's Kim Promise tonight as well. Please don't forget that. We spoke to him earlier. So it's going to be an interesting Christmas. We hope to see you everywhere we go. I mean, Ghana is small, so. Oh, I cry small, more like it. So thank you so much, gentlemen. For joining us, you wanted to say something, George? Yeah, I mean, uh, looks like all the parties are in Accra. So, if you know others can emulate uh, Waterland, George, you know, I'm coming. <laughs> no, no, let me, let me, let me land. He let, wants let, to order. Why are you asking no, him let to let me to Let me land. I'm saying, this just, no, just like Waterland is out of Accra. Uh -huh. Can others also look outside Accra? Oh, because, they start going. Yeah, because most of the comments that we see on most of this. There's no incentive for, for what? Exactly. Why should, why why should, should you go to outside Accra? Oh, no, I mean, come on. You don't think that the Northern Region and all these other places. Yeah, don't tell about Middleton. People in Tamale fill stadium. They do. Yeah. But you see, like I said, yeah. every time we're having conversations about the art and forgetting the, the, the business or the yeah. commerce of it. So it's a business. What is, look, they need to be, if you really want to encourage events, oh, being two seconds. decentralized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need the proper authorities to be up and doing in terms of providing that much needed, needed investment. If you want to spread the wealth, yeah. really, you need to provide that incentive. Do you know what it takes? Do you know the things we came up to just trying to expand? Water land, two hours of water. Yeah, because, yeah. So, because, there because so they need to do what they are. Because, 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 because the authorities, okay. authorities okay. need to be mindful that when you move one, we have thing, to go. It's a whole economic system you're moving. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Baba Sadiq Abdullahi Abu is a media and entertainment entrepreneur. Senna Kwachi is a digital expert, and George Britton is talent. Uh, he's a talent manager and also a pundit. And of course, he handles Camido. So they've been working magic. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas in advance to you guys. We'll be back. Busy Signal, Stone Boy. They are here in the studios right after. Yeah.